Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about how to stack or layer materials inside of Redshift using the Material Blender. It's a node-based layering system, but it works instinctively like Photoshop does. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay, so today we're talking about how to stack materials with inside of Redshift. So the first part of this lesson is going to be um, just a quick, uh, hopefully five minute, uh, introduction on how to do this. I'm just going to be using a sphere and I'm going to give you the quick ABCs if you just want the quick answer. Um, and then the second part I'm going to actually go and uh, show you something a little more in depth. I'm going to show you how I made the cover page um, with the mask and everything and all the different textures. Um, so for the first part, um, yeah, let's just jump in and do it. So here we have um, a base material and all it is is just like, it's literally just like a plastic material. It's like the default. I just made it white. And then I have here a gold material and this gold material is, I'm just going to drop it on here. This gold material is just gold that is um, matted out with um, a scratch mat, right? And the idea being that I want this on top of my white layer. Okay, so let's go ahead and put my base material back on there and let's drop the gold material on top. Okay, and instantly, as you've probably noticed yourself trying to do this, it just gets rid of your layer below. And that's because um, Redshift does not, it does not layer materials through the object manager here. It layers materials inside the node manager, right? Or inside the shader graph. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. So what we need to do is we need to just kind of create one master material. So let's go to our base and we'll just say that this is our master material, okay? So let's go ahead and let's create a new material. So this material that we just created is what we're gonna want on top. Okay, let's just make this a default gold and let's just take a look at it. Okay, and then let's just step in to where we were and I'm just gonna steal this texture here um, so I can cut it out. I'm gonna paste this. All right, so uh, what we wanna do is we wanna grab a material blender. All right, so the material blender is nothing more than a layering system and it's a layering system specifically for materials and that's important to understand because um, if you come over here to like a color layer, which I also have another lesson on, color layers are specifically for like rasterized images, for like RGB grayscale images. They don't work with material blenders. So material blenders are for materials, um, stacking materials. So let's go ahead and let's take our base here and let's put this into here and let's have that be our base color. So again, you wanna think of this as Photoshop. The only difference is, is that it works from the top down. So the top is actually the bottom and the bottom is the top. And it, it seemed weird when I first used it um, however long ago, but now it's just like, I don't even think about it. So it's really, it's something you'll get used to. Um, all right, so we have our base material and let's just go ahead and see, so that's normal. And then let's take our gold material. Now for our gold material, we're gonna put that in the layer one color, okay? Put this down here and you'll see right away like nothing happened. Well, that's because we have to tell it how to blend. So once again, um, a lot of times uh, in Redshift, black, black is nothing and white is everything, right? So right now it's black and this is basically telling our alpha what to do. So we, let's make it pure white we make it pure white, we get the full gold. We're saying we want full like transparency. This is essentially a transparency. If we go in the middle, it's gonna be 50-50. If we go kind of here, we're gonna have mostly gold, right? And it's just mixing a little bit with our base material. And maybe if I make it like something crazy like blue, you can see how it's kind of mixing there. Um, all right, cool. So we got that, but like this is okay, I guess. But what if you want like more control? So most of the time what I do is I use a texture to drive the base color. So come in here, layer one, and let's set this into your, your blend color. All right, so what this is gonna do now is this, this is essentially your alpha, right? It's saying, it's saying whatever, whatever is black is transparent and whatever is white is opaque, okay? So now you'll see right here where this white is, when I flip back, you're gonna see that we have that there, right? So it's blending on top as you would if it were stacked here. And it doesn't stop here. I mean, you can you can do this, um, yeah, up to six layers, and then I'm guessing you can probably just put a material blender inside of a material blender and just keep going. Um, so this is two, so let's just do one more. So let's say that we have uh, the third texture, which I'm actually gonna get rid of this, and this is, this is nothing more than just a different color. So 
let's go back to our base and let's drop this in here and um, let's put this into color 2 layer color and once again nothing happens uh, because we have it set to black and then, you know if we go to white it'll be mostly that um, so let's take this texture that I took out of the other one and let's put this into our layer 2 blend color all right, so now, I mean, it's hideously ugly, sorry, but um, now what you're seeing is we're seeing all three layers, right? So we're, we're getting what, what we want. Um, and it's uh, in this option, I actually did a reference. So you can, what you can do is you can just take a redshift material and I'm just gonna make this like, I don't know, silver or something. And I can just drag this into here and then I can put this, I'll just replace layer two with this. And now I can edit this in um, in a separate node, but I can still have it be, um, I can still have it affect all the other layers, right? Like, so I can use this silver material in multiple materials um, because it's a reference object. It's just referencing it. So I think it's kind of nice to have a reference object most of the time, because that way I can easily step into it and I don't have to um, just have it be isolated within this one uh, material here. Um, and then the last thing to note is the additive. So all additive is, it's like if you're familiar with uh, After Effects, like it's just put in additive mode. So it just pluses it, um, the colors together. So that's all it does if, if you want that. Um, I don't find myself using it that much, but it's there. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, that is the absolute uh, basics. There's really not much more than the basics to it. Um, so let's go ahead and jump over to part two where I'll show you how to do a little bit more in-depth um, layering and how I made that setup for the cover page. All right, so in part two, I'm going to run you through how I textured uh, this mask here um, using the Material Blender. Um, and it might just be fun to kind of get uh, a little bit more insight on just, um, yeah, my workflow on texturing. So um, what I have here is I have... Um, yeah, essentially a set of three different materials I created that I'm using um, together to create this final image. Um, and what we have is we have um, our base material, which is going to be this right here, which I'll show you. It's like a red material um, and it's like super shiny and glossy right now, um, which is obviously uh, pretty extreme. So what I did is I took that and I, um, I applied a dirt map to it, right? So this dirt map um, is gonna, it's gonna tell the reflections where to be. So again, the more white, the more you're gonna see this material and the less white, uh, the less you're gonna see it. Um, so I, I piped it into a ramp so I could get a little bit more curvature out of it. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna put it back on this material and you're gonna see um, what happens after this. So um, I'm going to put this into the reflection roughness. And when I do that, you're going to see it's going to lose a lot of this glossiness, right? Because it just looks better when it's like that. So basically that material I just showed you is uh, is doing that. So it's our first material. Um, and then the second thing is I knew I need my, um, I need my, uh, what layer is gonna go on top of it, right? So for the second layer, um, this is my base material. And then for the second material, what I have, I'm going to take this off. And then you will see for the second material, it's kind of like this like uh, porcelain type material, right? And it's like super hot up here and that's okay because the final result, uh, it's gonna get matted out. So um, that's this material and uh, I don't want it to be showing all the way through. So what I did is once again, I got a roughness mat and this roughness mat um, is going to be telling, uh, yeah, this porcelain material where to go through. Once again, I piped it through a ramp and that is just crushing it a little bit. So it's not quite as apparent. And I'm putting this into the reflection roughness. So um, what we have is we have a slightly taken back version of what we had before. Um, now, I don't want this material to be everywhere, so I need to create my blend color. Okay, so let me just move this out a little bit so we can see a little better. All right, so for my blend color um, for layer one, what I am doing is... 
what I'm doing is I'm taking um, this texture uh, right here, another dirt map. It's pretty much all dirt maps. You're going to see a, a pattern here. And then I'm piping it through a ramp again to just kind of crush it a little bit. And I'm putting that into my blend color, right? So I'm going to actually remove this from the blend color right now, from blend color one, so you can see kind of the before and after. So right now we have uh, this, which is basically just our base layer because we haven't told layer one um, to do any color. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for the layer one blend color, I want you to be this. So this is essentially, you know, my alpha. So let's go here, layer one blend color. And then what you're going to see happen here is that it's going to take back a lot of it and it's just going to put that white um, where the white is on on this layer. So you see there's white here, there's kind of white here. Um, and you'll see now when we come over here, there's white here, there's some white here. And then, you know, if I if I come in here and I, I mess with my ramp more, this sh should put more of it. Excuse me. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you can just kind of adjust it to how you uh, feel you like. Um, for the third one, I actually want a little bit of like kind of like a goldish look or something like that. It's like some sort of accent details. Um, so what I did is um, I took a material and all this material is, it's literally just a default copper material. I'll just show you. Bum, bum, bum. Computer slow today. All right, default uh, copper, uh, copper material. And then once again, I took a roughness map and that roughness mat is gonna tell um, the reflections where to happen. So this is the roughness map. So let's go ahead and pipe that into the reflection roughness. Uh, reflection roughness. And you're gonna see that it's going to be taken back now. It's not gonna be quite as uh, shiny as it was before. So, um, and then next, what I wanted is I just want this to be on certain areas. So to do that, um, I grabbed a curvature map and I'll show you the curvature map here. So the curvature map, um, basically it just, it looks at your curves and you can adjust this further, but uh, by default, uh, yeah, wherever the curves are uh, is where it goes white and wherever they're not, um, it goes black. Um, so elevated white. Um, so I had that, but then I thought like, well, this is like really perfect. So wouldn't it be nice to kind of beat this curvature map up even more? So it's not just perfect. So what I did is I took a color layer. And again, this is important to remember. Color layer is for um, rasterized images, not for materials. Um, so I took a color layer and then I wanted the curvature map to be matted out by another roughness map. So this roughness map, which you're gonna see here, is what I'm using to mat out my uh, curvature. And then I, I just brought my ramp in and I just pulled the contrast a little bit. So I'm, I'm putting in, um, I'm putting in a curvature map into layer one color and then I'm masking it out with this. So here we go. So this is what it looks like after, right? And then I'll show you what it was like before. Okay, I'll take a picture of this. So you can kind of see before and after. So it's just kind of beating it up a little bit and it just gives it that extra level of detail. Um, so that's doing that. And then what I'm doing again, remember we have this, we have this like copper gold material and um, it's gonna be driven by this layer right here. So let's go ahead and take this copper gold material and let's put this on layer two. So layer two color. So instantly we're not gonna see anything, right? Cause again, we haven't told it to do anything. So let's say um, that we want our blend color to be this mat that we created. All right, so now you're gonna see that that copper just comes through on these on the edge here, right? It's just coming through where we told it to come through. Um, and I can come in here and I can really just kind of mess with this ramp and get it to where I like it. Like I'm taking it away now, like you'll see if I do this, the more I, more black there is, there will be um, less of it, right? Um, so you can mess with that, but this is kind of where I landed. Uh, and then when they're all combined, I mean, you essentially have created a, a composition for it, right? You've essentially created your, if you will, your Photoshop, right? So you have your layer one, which is the bottom, your base, and then you have 
layer two. You could think of this as a completely separate material, and it is. Um, so you have your material, and then you have your mat that's matting it out always. Once again, layer three, you have a material, and then you have your mat that is matting it out. And you combine them all together, and then, uh, yeah, you get, you get whatever you want. And again, I can come in here, and I could make this like some ridiculous uh, material. Like I can come in here and make it, I don't know, what's milky coffee? Let's see. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, weird stuff. But again, it's it's only going on the edges. So now I've got milky coffee on the edges, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, anyways, you get the idea. Uh, that's it. I hope that this second part was helpful. It just kind of dives in a little more and shows you more of like a real world example of, of how you could use this. And, um, and I hope that this has helped you and I will see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.